Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, guys. My name is Guillaume Dubuc. I'm product manager of operations orchestration. And today I'm with uh, Michael Betan, who is the practice leader for America. The objective today is to present you the power of our orchestration tool, and especially how we play in the robotic process automation space. So for this matter, we would like to share with you a live demo of the product starting with an infrastructure IT process automation and finishing with a business process use case. So we want to share with you our ability to automate any kind of processes, IT process, business process, by the way of using software robots, API automation, OCR, and chat ops technologies. So the demo is going to be a dialogue between two personas. And for this matter, I will be the QA engineer, and Michael here will be the IT ops guy. Hello, Michael. Hey, Guillaume. How are you today? I'm good, Michael. As you know, Michael, as a QA engineer, my job is to test applications coming from the dev team. And in order to do it, in order to test all these applications, I need to get multiple platforms multiple times. And today, unfortunately, everything is manual, meaning that I need to go to multiple teams, multiple tools, multiple processes. I need to go to the service management tool. I need to go to the backup team, server team. So today, bottom line, it takes me a long time to get it done. So my request for you is I would like to get a repetitive process that will allow me to get the same platform multiple times until my tests are done. Could you help me today, Michael? Yes, sure. Let's do it together. First thing, let's connect to the Web Studio. Okay. And it's a HTML5 web-based uh, studio. And on the studio, we will automate the process you need. The first thing you will want is the ability to you know, clone an instance and uh, access your application. And for that, we'll use the content out of the box provided by the orchestrator. And we have 8,000 operations provided. One of them is Amazon Web Services. And we just have to drag and drop deploy instance and configure a few inputs and outputs to have it working. Okay. The first thing is we want to configure the identity in order to access the API from Amazon. Then the credential and the image ID, the application you want to deploy in this case. Then you want to specify the instance type, small, medium, large, and you should be good for inputs. Then you would like at least two inputs. The first one is the instance ID and the IP address to access the web URL of your application. You just have to save and this operation is done. But I guess you want to be notified. Are you using a collaborative tools, Guillaume, today? Yes, we are using uh, Slack uh, internally. Great. So yes, we can integrate with Slack, Microsoft Teams, Mattermost, and we can push information dynamically to these collaborative tools. And by the way, we have a bot named Maestro, uh, and we can interact with Maestro to trigger a workflow on the fly from the channel directly. But for the matter of this demo, what we want is just to push dynamically in, in, in information to the to the channel, uh, mm -hmm. but with the you know, the bot, we can also have incident and event, as you can see it uh, on the screen. Let's go back so to the studio. You can bring the tool, OO tool, in the middle of a chat with developers, for example? Yes, absolutely. OK, perfect. Thank you. So let's take the Slack content we have and just drag and drop a pass message. The goal is to push dynamically the right, you know, information. So we will start with deploy instance, then we'll do a post message, and I will go to input and configure for inputs. The first one is the token, how to interact with the API. Then the channel, which channel we want to use to post the message, and then the text message. 
so here we want to say your EC2 instance is ready and we, we want to provide dynamically the instance ID coming from the output from before. And then we want to give the web URL to access the application. And for that, what do you need, Guillaume? Just the IP. I save. And then I just have to drag and drop success to finish my workflow. By default, it's using a, a failure here, but I can override and choose my own uh, failure process. Okay. Then I can use a debugger, which is completely embedded in order to troubleshoot my workflow as a service author. Okay. So to summarize, Michael, you just have to use what you call content. So all the operations that you have in the left frame, drag and drop what you need and link them and maybe configure input output and that's it? Absolutely. Oh, that's great. It's a great tool, very simple to use. So let's see the outcome. If we are going to EC2, we refresh, we can see a new instance has been provisioned. Uh, F12 with the right size and the right image. Now, if I'm going to Slack, we can see a new message pushed dynamically with the instance ID, F12 again, and the IP address to access the application. So here you go. We can access your application just here in order to access um, the application. Oh, login failed, reset password required. Oh, Michael, don't tell me that I will have to go to my uh, service management tool, open an incident ticket, uh, communicate back and forth with the support team, etc., etc. Don't tell me that, Michael. No, actually, we can automate this part of the process. We can create a change on the fly and, you know, re uh, fulfill this change automatically using our uh, content. What are you using today? Are you using Smacks? No, unfortunately, we don't have the chance to use such modern application. We use a very old one. And by the way, as you said at the very beginning, I want you to prove me that you can integrate with any kind of technologies, even the very old ones. Yeah, so, yes, sure. so we use this one. Yes, you, we will use this one. Sure. So we are completely agnostic. Doesn't matter if it's BMC, CA, ServiceNow, our own technology smacks, we can automate because it's all about API and content out of the box. So what I will do here, I will just go to the ServiceNow uh, content and drag and drop create change in order to uh, you know, request a reset password part of the fulfillment process. But to do that, first I need a password. I need to generate a password using my mm -hmm. orchestration workflow. So hold on, hold on, uh, Michael. So I heard that we already did uh, this step uh, and we already orchestrated this task, but it's Python based. So can you reuse it? I'm, I'm wondering if you can reuse it and Ye yes. include it in the, in the workflows that you are building. Yes. Okay, great. So uh, a line of business could have you know, just use Python, YAML, and open source in a standalone way, and they can contribute back to the core IT. So let's say they go to GitHub, they found a great generator password, then they can just use the open source engine from our RPA and orchestration solution and develop their own YAML using IntelliJ, for example, as an ID. They have they can build a new operation, just copy past the Python operation and make it uh, available. Then they want to test and troubleshoot. And they can just use a CLI, which is completely standalone, to test you know, this workflow execution. And you, as you can see, it generates uh, a new password. Then they just have to go to Git and push the new file, and it will push this uh, change into the repository. As core IT, now I can come back and go to the SCM repository and pull the changes from the Git, and I will be able to access and reuse the content pushed by the line of business. So let's do it, Guillaume. Let's go to Utils and let's mm -hmm. open the password generator Python-based operation. We can see the Python action. I can even edit 
as directly from the designer or see the YAML representation from the UI. Now let's go back to the workflow. I want to generate a password, so I will just drag and drop generate password. I will configure one output, which is the password, right? Mm -hmm. And then I will um, configure this password with this change, and I will configure the change I would like to push. Reset my account using this temporary password and I just have to provide the password from the output from before. Save and here we go. I just have to save and click play again to replay and test again the same workflow. That's great, Michael. So again, you just drag and drop some content, some new operations, and include them uh, to the to the entire workflow to make it down. So it's it's very easy. It seems very easy. And uh, uh, just uh, to summarize the other one, uh, confirm me if I'm wrong. But so you you offer a kind of hybrid of three experience, so graphical or textual in the same UI. This is what you offer, no? Absolutely correct. You can do orchestration as click or orchestration as code using YAML and open source and leverage the same enterprise grade platform. So let's see the outcome. Let's go back to EC2. We refresh, we see a new instance to CF this time. If we go to Slack, we see a new message. I can click on the maze application just here. And by the way, if we go to change, and we see now a new uh, change has been created. Reset my account using a temporary password, and it was done just now. Okay, perfect. So we created the change inside the service now. Now we can connect to your application. Yes, voila, we are connected to your application, and I can even see your face, Guillaume. That's great. Fantastic, Michael, fantastic. It will facilitate dramatically uh, my job. So thank you very, very much. So uh, Michael, I have another process to automate. And uh, this time it's not an IT process. It's not about provisioning. This time it's about business process. So I'm wondering if you can use this product, your orchestration product, the same one, to automate this business process. So IT and business combined together. Yes, absolutely. We can automate uh, business, this business process. Can you describe this business process, Guillaume? Yes, so today, uh, as uh, you can guess, AWS is very costly. I need to check my banking account balance very often, every day. And the process today is manual. Every day, I need to go to my bank. And first of all, I have to give my driving license ID to the agent. And the agent has to fill from this ID a couple of information, my first name, last name, and some other ones. And then process it in their mainframe banking system. And as far as I know, this whole legacy system doesn't have any API or any way to connect or interact with. So again, I'm really wondering if your solution is able to automate this business process from my license ID to the legacy mainframe banking application. Yes, and let's do it. So the first thing is you need a mainframe, right? And we will automate exactly the steps you have to do. And for that, we need to do a bottom-up. So let's start with the recording. And the first capability we need and we have with the new RPA solution is a recorder. So I just have to click record, click OK, and it starts a recording mode. Then I will do exactly the step a bank agent will do. So it will go to the mainframe, it will enable the transaction, it will log as a bank agent, and it will go to your account balance. We can see your name, by the way, Guillaume. 
we can also see your savings account not great and let's go to the checking account and we can see 514.80 dollars okay once i finish the transaction i just have to stop i can close it and what we can see on the left is all the steps have been recorded it's not screen scrapping not clicks but the native Roomba protocol recorded inside the recorder. But it's not finished here, right? We need to parameterize. We need to have something generic. We need to give the inputs, first name, last name, but also get an output, which is the account balance. You, the bank also need to check your identity. You, you said you will give as an input your ID. And they need to make sure that you are a bank, you know, customer and you are allowed to access your account. So for that, we need another layer, an orchestration layer we can leverage to automate this process. And for that, same thing, we need a studio. And the first two steps will be get the first name and the last name extracted from your ID. Once we have this information, we need to go to the database from the bank and check your identity. Only then we can trigger the robot and provide as input the first name and last name. The robot will execute in a generic way this transaction, get the account balance and give it as an output. So we just have to configure two things on the workflow. We need an input, which is a description, the text from the ID, and as an output is account balance, okay? And then as an end user, you want to trigger this business process in a self-service way. So we need the self-service portal. For that, we will use SMAX this time. And we will go to the service catalog from SMAX, and we just have created a uh, a service offering we can consume. The name is Check Bank Balance. I click on Request Service and this offering will automatically trigger the RPA solution to fulfill the request. And here we have your ID with everything we need to check your identity. When I click Submit, it will automatically fulfill the request using OCR technology to transform the image to text and pass it to the orchestrator. And we can see a new workflow is running inside the controller with all the steps. If I'm going back to the robot, what we can see, and I don't touch the screen, is it triggers the transaction end to end, giving as parameter the first name and last name. And it will collect the account balance from Guillaume. If I'm going back now to the robot controller, we can see that the, the workflow is uh, almost successful. And then it will provide to the self-service portal, uh, you know, a solution. A new solution has been provided. I just have to click see solution. And we can see if I go on, on full details, the solution has been provided 514.80 dollars as your account balance. We can see your ID and the OCR translation from image to text, which has been provided to the orchestrator to parse and check your identity. So here you go, Guillaume. Voila, we automated this business process end to end. Michael, it's great. Uh, it seems very, very simple. And uh, I like the idea of uh, that the starting point is my ID. So with the OCR technology, you extract the specific information, first name, last name, and then you process this data uh, in the mainframe system by the way of using software robot. I really like it. And I like uh, also the, the fact that you use uh, the same product to automate IT process and business process. So thank you very much, Michael. It was a great uh, demo today.